It's HBR One, All Things Considered, and I'm Dave Lawrence. Ringo Starr's all-star band touring the Asia-Pacific soon. And while the tour not expected to reach the Aloha State of Hawaii, today we're going to start a series of interviews with members of the band. We'll hear from nearly the entire group. And we begin with Garden Isle resident Todd Rundgren, who told us about his remarkable journey of meeting each Beatle. The first Beatle that I probably met was George. And that was in the context of producing Bad Fingers Straight Up Record, which George had begun production of but could not continue because he'd gotten wrapped up in his Bangladesh project. A brief encounter with George, and that was my only encounter with George. I don't recall whether it was Paul that I met next. I knew Linda Eastman when I was living in New York City, and she was a photographer, and she liked to take my picture. So <laughs> I did uh, quite a few number of photo sessions with Linda Eastman before she left for England and eventually met Paul. I believe it was through her that I met him when he was in New York City. That was sort of brief. I kind of brushed elbows with him on occasion, but not really had any deep conversations with him either. Similarly, I once met John at a place called Over the Rainbow in L.A. when he was sowing his wild oats with Harry Nielsen. <laughs> Early 70s stuff. Yeah, he was trouble. And <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear. <laughs> and somebody introduced me to him and said a brief hi. We didn't really exchange much banter either. I last met Ringo, kind of a one-off gig that we put together for the Jerry Lewis Telethon. I think it was the memory of that experience that caused Ringo to contact me when he started doing the All-Star Band thing. What year had the uh, Jerry Lewis thing been? Like 1979 or something. He starts the All-Star Band in 89. Had you interacted with him at all in the interim? Really not much at all, no. I'm a fairly kind of private guy, and I live out here in Kauai. But my manager, who did live in L.A., they were actually socially sort of close. And that's how I think that my name somehow remained in contention. <laughs> and then so pretty quickly into doing the All-Star Band, I believe it's his third time out, summer of 90. Too. I was like one of five guitar players in the band, and I got to rehearsal like a couple of days late because I was ending a tour, and so all the guitar parts were taken. I just wound up strumming acoustic through the entire show. But I'm sure you didn't care because you're like, I'm jamming with a Beatle. As I say, it's a karmic thing. If a Beatle calls, you must answer. <laughs> Do you get personal time with him? We travel together. Going from the hotel to the airport, he's in one car, we're usually in another car, and maybe a couple of the guys in the band will ride with him. But once we get there, we're all on the same plane. We socialize and talk and joke to the gigs. It's really one big happy family. Actually, this is kind of like a little bit different experience than the other times, because the other bands, there was... A, always some kind of weird interpersonal dynamic going on between somebody and somebody. And usually I was involved <laughs> somehow. <laughs> but Ringo, he's extremely friendly with your guests and families before the show. He just loves to hang out. He loves to joke. And as far as rehearsals go, I mean, this recent one, we rehearsed for 10 days. Uh, he really does like to be involved. We aren't really about trying to play the songs exactly as they were originally recorded. Some of the guys in this current band have gone through previous incarnations and recall how unpleasant it is when somebody gets overly anal about a particular song, just trying to play it exactly the way it was originally recorded instead of making your own kind of contribution to it. Right. And so I know that I personally am not going to harangue anybody about how they play my song if it's recognizable that's fine with me. <laughs> you know, I know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> it's funny. Sometimes, actually, people will be playing the Beatles songs wrong. <laughs> it seems like a nearly impossible, but... <laughs> And it's not until we listen to the record that we confirm it. <laughs> There's a lot of little details in there, especially on Ringo's playing. He has a certain sort of feel that no one else in the world has or has been able to capture. We all recognize that he is, in his own simple way, still one of the world's greatest drummers. We wish that we were having the tour come here to the islands. You know, I know that there was some talk of trying to do a, a gig on the way back from Japan and Honolulu, but just didn't come together. Certainly understand how that tour thing works, and hopefully one of these days Ringo will hit the islands. But since it's not coming here, as you know, I'm headed there to Sydney and do some interviews with you guys. I uh, look forward to catching up with you, recording a little something to bring back for our 
HPR community here. Sure, sure, can do. Thank you very much. I've had a pleasure talking with you. I look forward to seeing you in Sydney, and uh, thank you for the great stories. It was an, a really fun interview. No problem. Thank you. Take care. Aloha, Tav. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.